morning, this is Melissa with the stockswish.com and welcome. Welcome to a video that I'm doing just for a client or a prospective client. He was in the uh, live trading room or the, the webinar today, the live webinar today, and asked me about OUTR. I said I didn't pay it any mind uh, and I don't even know what it did. So I said I'd look at it and do a video for him. First of all, it was a bullish gap, and I prefer to do bearish gaps. There are certain bullish gaps that I know, notice, and then I call out and say these are good if you want to buy them. Uh, I did not do that with this today. I didn't even notice it at all. And the interesting thing is it wasn't a good bullish gap. It was actually what I call a nothing kind of play. So we'll go over it in a minute, but I want to say one thing. When your eye, okay, your eye, when your eye gets used to seeing patterns in charts, you, you really do just black out everything else that isn't good. So it would not be surprising for me to, to not even pay any mind to hundreds and thousands of stocks in any given day that happen to gap because my eye directs me immediately whether or not something is worth me even rating or watching. And again, I've been doing this now for six years. But, but that is the way to go because then you don't waste time uh, with crappy stuff. So this chart was, this was not a buy today in the gap. I'm just seeing this chart. If you want my honest opinion, I think this chart is a little bit of a mess, but I'll tell you what I think of it here. Boy, this chart's really a mess. Jeez. This actually was a nice bearish gap here. That's the direction to play this. And this one here failed. Was it the end of the world? No. Okay, it just failed on the day. This had a huge monster, big gap down after this fall off here. But this actually uh, very well could have worked to the downside. It didn't. And then when this followed through the next day, okay, this followed through in here. And then the play in here was short. Now, it bottomed out in here for the moment. This is temporary for the moment. Oh, this is going to break. This is going to break eventually again here. Now I see this. But for the moment, this didn't break. Rallied on up here. Remember, in this time, this is happening. The market's rallying too. I don't know what caused this bar here. You can go back and look and find out on the internet, look up the stock. Something probably caused this move like this. But it was really a rally into resistance. I'm not sure what caused this gap here this morning because, again, I didn't keep any mind to it. It doesn't, doesn't really matter, though. When the stock gapped up here and opened to 5190, it was not a buy. And if you had rated this gap for my system, it wouldn't have rated high enough to buy it all. Now, I know what people like to do. They like to short these things as fades. And you might have tried to do this. I'm going to look at the one minute. I haven't looked at it yet. But I doubt it had a proper setup in here based on this top and tail configuration. And really, it just became heavy on itself and came in. And it wasn't a good buy in the first place. Would I short this? No. I'm not shorting bullish gaps. Would I buy this? No. It's not a good golden gap to the upside. It's, this is not a good buy. Okay, It does not rate high enough to buy. And it's caught actually in a terrible area here. So it's a nothing play. You don't do anything with it. I'm going to look at the one minute and see if it had any entries, but I doubt it. I also have a feeling this was just too, too way too sketchy to do, but let's look at it. It looks like this happened. See, that's what made that bar on Friday. There it is. Look, I didn't even see this because I didn't look at the one. So this huge big move happened, a $4 move that happened into the last five minutes of trading Friday. This looks like some kind of news. So before that, the stock was at 54.10. Let me just look at that. See, this is stuff that people don't take any mind to, and you got to pay attention to it. So really, the stock prior to that news was here on Friday at 3.55. This last thing here that happened, which was 80% of the bar that happened on the day, happened in the last five minutes. So buying came into the stock, it looks like, okay, that pushed this up overnight, whatever that news generated thing that happened in the last five minutes that made the close of this bar. But this isn't how the bar traded all the day. The bar traded all day like this. If I could just erase this here to show you, that's how the bar traded. Okay, so this happened late Friday night and people bought it or carried it overnight then that bought it late. People that bought it late just carried it overnight. And then it gapped up here to 62 and just sold off. The, the, you know, there's nothing to do with this, though, really. It's just silly. But let's look what happened here. 
So if you tried to short this here, thinking it was a fade, it failed. Rallied up over the high of the day, set up again, failed, set up again, failed, and set up again, failed. So this didn't act right. Something should not trigger and trigger and trigger and trigger and trigger and trigger and trigger and, trigger and fail. It's something should set up and go. And if it sets up and fails, you can relook at it with confirmation to set up again. But something shouldn't set up and fail two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. That's not a good play. And, and eventually then you can wait for the higher time frame here to do this. If you wanted to do this then and short it on a 15 minute, I still wouldn't have done this. I would never have done this in a million years. And this is just completely the opposite of everything I do. But you'd be, you're shorting this then. Even if you faded this today, look what you're shorting. That's strong. Now, in the moment that it happened, the time frame of the movement was late Friday into overnight into the gap up this morning that happened very quickly. So, but looking at that as you just as it stands right there, if you decide to short the stock in a 15 minute, this is what you're shorting. And I would never short something that looks like that. Now, as it turns out, looking on the daily, it isn't a good buy. But I wouldn't still short this. It doesn't have high odds of working. It was very sloppy. And if you did it, you got stopped that a couple times before you even made any money. And it did have a move down into itself. But I think you lost money more than you made money in it until you got paid. That is just not the right way to trade, I don't think. And why would something have setups, failure, setup, failure, setup, failure, setup, failure, setup, failure? Because overall, this is nothing, there's nothing to do with this here today. Nothing at all. So this is not a professional gap. And this is what some people will call a novice gap. A novice gap, though, isn't a strategy. A novice gap is a gap in the, in the, actually, this isn't even a novice gap. This isn't even a novice gap for what a real novice gap is. And again, my terminologies are different than other people's. This is not even a novice gap. That's how people played it today. But it's not a novice gap. Why isn't this a novice gap today? Because a novice gap is a stock in an uptrend. Stock is in an uptrend rallying up. And then the stock gaps up after a big rally up and a big extension up. And it comes in as a fade and you short it. That is actually not even a strategy at all. That is what people play. It's actually a play. It's not a strategy. Or something is trading down, 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 down. In a downtrend, trades down, gaps down big, and they flip it and they buy it. Again, there's no strategy there. You're playing against the directional move, and you're playing against the directional move when you short stuff that's in an uptrend. That is really the definition of a novice gap, if you want to do that way. That's not even what this was. People play this as a novice gap. This wasn't even a novice gap, because this chart is not in an uptrend. This chart is actually a mess. And if anything, it's in a downtrend or neutral. But I really say downtrend. And that's actually the reason that this bar traded on the day red because the stock is in a downtrend. And any chance the stock gets to fall down on top of itself, it will. This chart is lower tomorrow, lower on through, and will break 46.25. I don't know when. It may gap down again. This stock is short, at least until otherwise noted. It's not a long. And this move here was so fakey fake because it happened in the last five minutes of the day and people just bought it and then carried it overnight. Uh, but this isn't even a novice gap. In fact, I should need, really need to go over this more with people because people think this is a novice gap and it's not. Why? Because the stock is not in an uptrend. And you'd be looking to feign something uptrend. That's not the real definition or the way I defined it. Okay. And also, um, a novice gaps really aren't a strategy and you're trading against the trend. And I just don't do them. There's nothing to do with this here. There's absolutely no play. And Something that's good to do, that's clean to trade, that's a nice gap, doesn't have stop at after stop at after stop at after stop at until it goes on to work, okay? It's clear, and it's clear pretty quickly what it's going to do. And there wasn't anything clear about this this morning except for there's nothing to do with it, and that's probably why I didn't even notice it because I just, my, my brain, my, my mental imaging, my pattern recognition sensory in my brain does not bother with things that are pieces of crap. I just don't have time in the morning. And once you learn how to trade my system, uh, David, if you want to, you won't have time for it either. So I hope you didn't get hurt in this uh, because there wasn't anything to do with this here today. And the market didn't help us as well either today because the market was uh, a mess, choppy chop today. So anyways, this is OUTR, just a nothing gap of no consequence. But I did want to go over for David a very interesting there. Uh, pointing out some good things that's accurate to notice. And if anyone's interested in more information, you can email me on the upcoming GAP course, which is this weekend, October 12th and 13th, Saturday and Sunday, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. My email is melissa at thestockswish.com. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.